Hey guys, this is Ryan. I was going to do a quick discussion about like the way that gratuitous ARP works and um, why you use it with protocols such as HSRP. I, in, in the UCS and VMware classes, we talk about it as well. I've got a buddy of mine who's in VMware class this week and he's like, uh, you know, they're talking about failover and he said it sends out a gratuitous ARP. Isn't that what we talked about in CEH? Uh, and the guy took my CEH class before and he was saying, um, you know, we use ARP poisoning to update the, you know, the ARP cache of the other hosts on the network so we can kind of steer their traffic. Um, is this, you know, is it kind of related? And I said, it's really not, it doesn't have anything to do with the end users. It's more about the infrastructure in the middle. So I'll kind of give you a quick example with how HSRP uses, uh, uses the same concept. So in, in HSRP, that's hot standby router protocol. That's uh, Cisco proprietary. It's their protocol for supporting multiple routers. So here we've got you know one router. Here's another router, and uh, to keep them straight, let's call that router A. This is going to be router B at the bottom. Now the reason that we have two routers is that if one was to go down, we couldn't get to the internet, which is over here. This is our cloud. We want to make sure that we can always get out there for for gaming and for YouTube and for all that important stuff. So those lightning bolts there, those are going to be our WAN connections, which connect the routers. Routers typically have these little X's in them. It's going to connect our routers to the LAN. Now within the LAN, let's say that we've got, just for example purposes, we've got these switches. So router A is connected to switch 1, router B is connected to switch 2. Over here we've got switch 3, and then just to keep it interesting, we'll go over here and make switch 4. And then finally we've got you, the user, who's just trying to watch what's going on with the internet. So the way that our connections are going to look is something like this. And then let me jump over the pen just to kind of keep this clear. Uh, let's say that this is going to be uh, switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four. Right? So let's throw some addressing in there. When you look at the actual addressing that gets used, you'll have IP addresses on each router. So like 10.1.1.100. And then at the bottom, we've got 10.1.1.101. So we see we've got these two IP addresses. What's cool is that when you're using HSRP or VRRP for that matter, there's a floating virtual IP. And this is kind of what makes it, what makes it good. I'll just put that in orange. That virtual IP 10.1.1.1 is going to be what the user all the way over here has for their gateway. And he's also going to have ARP cache that says 10.1.1.1 is at, let's say, ABC. Because that virtual IP address you see also has a virtual MAC address. Now, when, let's say router A is going to be active, when, whenever he's the, the master, I'll just put an M here, all traffic to 1011 comes to him. When someone ARPs for 1011, he says 10111 is over here at this MAC address, and the MAC address is ABC. Well, these guys are actually kind of linked together, and this virtual IP can be transferred from the master down to the backup in the event of a failure. So prior to failure, you know, we look at the host over there on the right. That host says, my gateway is 10111. And 10.1.1.1 can be reached at this MAC address of ABC. He sends all of his traffic to ABC. Now, what you want to remember is that the way that the switches populate their MAC address tables, the way that they know, you know which MAC addresses live where, is by looking at traffic that comes into the switch. And on ingress, as the, that frame arrives, he says, OK, cool. I see packets sourced from that MAC. It must be in this destination. So what you see under typical operations is that on switch 1, off of, let's say, port 1, a colon B colon C can be reached. And if we look at switch three, let's say that this is port two, going to port two, he knows that A colon B colon C colon can be reached in that direction as well. What happens when there's a failure? What happens when router A goes down for some reason? Code update, maybe this link fails and we're doing a link monitoring. For whatever reason, the master goes down and the backup becomes the master. So router B is now our master. In that scenario, and this is kind of the whole moral of the story, this is where a gratuitous ARP comes in. The gratuitous ARP is that unsolicited announcement that says, hey, everybody, 10.1.1.1 equals A colon B colon C colon. And remember, this is a broadcast, so it gets blasted out everywhere. 
Now, if we look at our host over here, he knew 10.1.1.1 equals ABC. That's really not what this is about. We're not updating anybody's ARP cache, which is what gratuitous ARP is for, which is what always kind of confused me about this process. I said, if, if the MAC address isn't changing because it's virtual and it's moving to the new router, why do we have to do it? Well, watch what happens. When this gets sent out, switch two learns that A colon B colon C colon is actually off of, let's call it port one. So it's in this direction, it's not to the right. And remember, because this is a broadcast, it gets flooded out all links except for where it came in. So when it goes from two to three, three learns, oh, A colon B colon C colon, I had an entry for that, but the entry was port two. Now it's actually port three. So anything coming into ABC is gonna come down this link, which is gonna get it to that right IP. Now again, because it's a broadcast, it's gonna be flooded out these ports as well. When, port, uh, when switch four over here learns about it, nothing's really new. He knew ABC was out this port anyhow. However, when that broadcast hits switch one, he thought A colon B colon C colon was out of port one, but now it's out of port two. So anything going to ABC will get sent out this link. So that gratuitous ARP is really just about updating the MAC address tables of all the switches within the broadcast domain. Hope that helps.